Hey, it's Shug here. Hey, new hammockers, could I have a word with you? Come here. Want to talk to you about centering your tarp over your hammock. So today we're just going to look at sort of centering that and dealing with water maybe coming in on the end of your hammocks. We're not going to deal with doors on the tarp, stuff like that. We don't want to put our socks on over our boots. And what we'll use today is my Black Crow DIY tarp that I made. It's got an 11 foot ridge line and a Dutchware netless hammock that's an 11 foot hammock. And I have a ridge line on mine, but we're going to deal with ridge line and no ridge line. Here we go. So here's my rig I've got up for you today. I have my tarp pulled back so you can kind of see how my hammock with my ridge line, which is that orange line right there, and what that does is set that sag in that hammock right there. So even if I pull my suspension really tight to my tree, that sag will pretty much remain the same. So here is my whoopee sling running down from my fence, my simulated tree on that side. I have my Dutch beaner here which acts as my water break, which is why it is under the tarp and not out here outside the tarp, otherwise it would do me no good. And that runs down my ridge line, same on the other side. So you can kind of see I've got my tarp with a little bit, I would say that's probably about 8-10 inches on each end. And that's where I start. Now I bet you're noticing my tarp seems like it's kind of listing a little bit that way. Now when I hang my hammock, that's my head end here. So I like to have my foot end a little bit higher because that slides me back into my sweet spot. So I set my tarp accordingly. So my head end of my tarp is a little bit lower than my foot end. Okay, here is how we do not want the tarp pitched. Now this is my head end and I got a lot of hammock up under the tarp on this end which gives me this right here which is usually not a problem but when your tarp is not even it can be. So we go through we get down to this end and we see that my hammock is sticking out a bit from the tarp and you look at it from that side and it's way more obvious. Oh, no. This is what you're aiming not to do, okay? And I understand if you've never had a hammock before, you may not be familiar with tarps. I realize that more and more every year, and a tarping is its own art. So uh, that said, I'm going to put links below this video in the description box on my tarp tutorial, on drip lines, and a couple of things I think might be helpful to you, the new hammocker. And we're going to look at first the way I usually do my tarps, and I have a separate ridge line going off each end of my tarp. That's just, after all my experimentation, I've gone back to that. I find that the easiest way to do it. Now, one of the easiest things to do first is just lay your tarp. Let's say you've tied your hammock up, and you're just going to sort of lay it over it if your tarp comes out of a stuff sack. Just lay it over like that, and then we'll go to one end and start. So really, the first thing you do is run your, run your tarp line around your tree. All right. So I got mine here. Generally what I do is I kind of go to the end of my hammock, which is right there, and I know I have this Dutch beaner here, so that's going to be my rain break, so I definitely want that under my tarp. And I kind of just start, and I make sure my tarp is a little bit past that, and I go ahead and I would tie off or use whatever method it is you're using to secure your guy line. I'm actually using on this tarp, I use something called a Dutch wasp. So it's really easy to clip it in, go down to the other end, and do that end, and then I work from there. And I can already see I can probably pull this one back a little bit, just because I sort of know this tarp. And nothing worse than laying there by your head and looking up thinking you're going to get wet. All right. So there's a start there. I'm probably a good eight inches back from that Dutch clip. That right there is the wasp that I use to hook up my tarp. Simple to use and you get them at dutchwaregear.com. All right, so here's how it works. So the wasp is just dangling on my ridge line. And because I got it on a prussic knot, it's easy to move up and down my line if I need to. And I got about a five wrap prussic knot on there. Pull it real tight, it never seems to slide. And I can bring my other end of my guy line cord and I hook it into that little hook 
and that allows me to pull my tarp tight where I want it. So in this case, I'm not going to pull it too tight. And then you just sort of take it, wrap around that little thing right there, go in here, give it a little pull, and that will hold my line. Okay, so that end is pretty secure over my Dutch beaner and the end of my hammock. So now I will go down to the other end. So I'll do the same thing on this end. Make sure that it's sort of pulled. Oh, that's probably a good eight inches there over my foot end. I know my Dutch beaner or whatever's gonna be my water break is under there. Believe we're gonna get back to that in a second. Real simple, real simple stuff. So now I know that that end is done. Now I'll just go back to the other end, tighten it up, and I should be pretty well centered. For me, I enjoy setting up my hammock and tarp. It's part of my fun after walking all day. Uh, otherwise, what else am I gonna do? Might gather some sticks and build a fire. I eat, I stare, I film, I sleep. So setting up my tarp is, is a pleasure for me. So now I'm just gonna tighten up my wasp. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stake my tarp out. All right, I've staked it out. We go and look. All right, that's probably, probably eight or nine inches that my Dutch beaner is under there. And there's my continual loop right there, or continuous, could be continual. Hammock sagging through, go to the other side. You can see under here, my water break is under the tarp. So I'm pretty well centered. And it'd be easy enough to tweak that again if I wanted to. But now let's talk about this worrisome thing right here. That just seems to get people a little bothered. Now, if my suspension was even higher on this end, we'd have that kind of thing. This seems to worry people badly. Well, won't this just destroy my tarp? You know, I, I don't think so really. And it, it is backpacking equipment. So it's meant to be fairly rugged and I'm not sure if it's gonna last you a lifetime, but I'm gonna get in the hammock now and let's see if it pulls down at all. Now you can see that once I get in the hammock, it pretty much pulls away. Now you might have noticed when I was swinging, it was sort of pushing my tarp over a little bit. That's just another one of those, another one of those things. And I could easily move my suspension by taking it off my toggle. I'll just move it around to the other side. So one thing, it's easy enough to move your suspension to the other side of your D-ring. Now it's still pulling up here. I'm going to get it again. Let's see if it's if it's hitting. Okay, a lot less that time. So with this particular hang, that might be an adjustment I make at camp when I'm setting up. It's one of the things I look for because it's annoying sometimes if you're when you first get in your hammock and you're swinging. And believe me, the swing never lasts that long. I always want the swing to last longer. In fact, I'll put my hand down and push myself if I'm just hanging out a while because I like rocking back and forth. So that's just something I might move. And that is just part of the tarp and the hammock life. Now, let's just talk about water coming in the ends and also I'm going to undo the ridge line on my hammock with this hang right here and see if my hammock sticks out the ends. Because I'm wondering myself because I always use a ridge line. And a ridge line is easy enough to put on your hammock. I'm also going to put a link to a hammock ridge line tutorial I did, and that will be in the description box below this video. I haven't touched a thing other than untying this ridge line, and I'm just going to let that just kind of dangle out there. Now, what I'm not able to do in the ridge line is to pull my hammock really tight like that. So what might a new hammocker do? They may pull their hammock 
really tight. All right. Now it might be lower. A lot of hammockers like to get their hammock high. What do we do, Shug? What do we do if that happens, Shug? Tell us, Shug. What do we do? 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 It's a little easier without a ridge line to end up pulling. Now maybe your hammock seems like it's just about right, but when I get in that, the end of my hammock is going to be hanging out a little bit. Plus, what I'm using for a water break is well outside the hammock. Let me just get in here and show you. So here I am laying and I'm, I, I could get wet here. Definitely not a deal breaker, it's just something to be aware of. Make sure your hammock ends and your water break are underneath your tarp. Make sure your hammock ends and your water break are underneath your tarp. Yo. So all the stuff I just talked to you about, about getting the ends of your hammock underneath your tarp along with your water break, that doesn't matter whether you're using the kind of uh, tarp suspension I'm using today, which is two separate lines coming off the D-rings, or if you use one piece of line that you tie from tree to tree and then flip your tarp over and have your tarp actually sitting on that, or a continual or continuous ridge line, whatever you call it. Sometimes I call it a continual continuous ridge line. So any of those, make sure you do that and you're gonna be on your way to getting dry. Now let's just talk really quickly again, because it's been a while, about drip lines. All right, I took my Dutch beaner off and just kind of larks headed my whoopee sling to my continuous loop or continual loop. Now let's just pretend that this is just one solid piece and that knot is not even there. That knot would probably work as a little bit of a water break. But the problem is you do not want the water coming here and then getting on your shock cord which may be holding your under quilt if you use that and then it's going to run down that easiest thing is take a cotton shoelace tie it under your tarp like that put two knots if you want no particular technique here just make sure it's tight and cotton is good because then the water will hit that the cotton will absorb it and it will drip down Another good way to do that if you want to tie that knot is just do like what is sort of like a little lark's head. I have a loop. I'm just going to pull these two ends through it. Something like that. And that gives a good bit of surface right there. And you can tighten that up. It's also easy to move up and down. You just want to make sure that it's not out here. It's doing you no good out here. You want it under your tarp end. Another thing you can do if you use whoopee slings, and you can do this with straps too, is just take the dangling part left over, bring that in, and tie that off under your tarp. Tie a couple of knots, and that will also act as a break. Ain't the prettiest thing, but it sure does work. Now normally with your strap suspension, you have a buckle, your cinch buckle. Now hopefully your buckle is up under here. If your buckle ends up way out here, just take the end of your strap, come under, and tie it off like I just did with the whoopee sling. You know, I get it. Hammocks lead themselves to kind of messing around and playing. With a tent, you pitch it, you throw it up, you put your rain fly on. But uh, just like the um, drip line here on your hammock, you know, a tent is not automatically waterproof. You got to seam seal it, you got to make sure that your footprint or your piece of plastic underneath is not sticking out beyond your tent so that the water puddles in it. You got to make sure you're not sitting in a low spot so the water gathers up and gets you wet. So tent or hammock, there's a couple of things to just be aware of in wet weather. And the thing about a hammock, it's a little bit of a loner's thing, man. So if you're kind of a loner and you know, I like people, well, I like humanity. I'm not sure I like humans or people. When I'm in the woods, I like to be away from everybody and sleep alone. I got a big thing of water. I'm going to pour it down the line here. Put a brow. All right, I'm gonna pour it right here. All right, let's get past here. All right, now we got some drips coming down. Not quite hit the shoestring yet. All right, there we go. Now it's hitting the shoestring. Does not seem to be getting past. So that was pretty ferocious. 
I think the redundancy thing would be just have tie that off on there but you need something under there in order to give yourself some chances of staying dry all secure in sector 7 Woo, buddy! Woo, buddy! A clean lens is a precious lens.